Get ready. What do you think about when I mention the name of this West African country, a nation some 5,000 miles from the studio where I'm filming today in Philadelphia? That nation is the Republic of Ghana. Maybe it's a friend of yours who grew up in Ghana, a neighbor and all those beautiful foods and rich culture that accompany that friendship. Or maybe Ghana brings up images of poverty and despair or the instability of their national government. But when you meet this missionary, you'll hear a different story behind the headlines because underneath all the political and economic challenge is a beautiful, true story of God's grace at work. Tonight, Frederick Kearney in Ghana with a message of hope you don't want to miss. Our team at Lighthouse TV and I love having missionaries on this program. For one, they don't often, if ever, go on TV. They're usually reluctant to use social media and they never boast. The, mission, the missionaries you'll meet tonight, or the missionary you'll meet tonight, uh, Fred Kearney, came recommended by a viewer of this program. They suggested that perhaps when they return to the U.S. the next time, we'd invite them on the program. We said, better yet, why not have him on the program while he's deployed at work in the field? That viewer sent us a link to their website in this wonderful, joyful interview about God's work in Ghana. Here's a little bit of that video. The last 12 years has been like a dot on a great big wall. The journey has been a beautiful journey of faith. We've seen God do some incredible things that only he can get the credit for. There's been a lot of Joshua's and Caleb's. We have Esther's and Ruth's and Rahab's among us. And truly indeed, as we see what God is doing in their lives, we know that truly they have received the message of God that we brought to them and that they're going to embrace it and continue to walk in the truth. From Ghana, West Africa, we're so honored to have Fred on the program. Fred, welcome to State of Independence. Thank you so much, Joe. We're so glad to have you on. First, can you tell me where we're finding you tonight? Where in Ghana are you located right now? We are in the wonderful area or enclave of Ashaiman, which is a very densely populated area uh, with tremendous needs, uh, spiritually, physically as well. Yeah, yeah. So, so t tell me how you get there. I mean, you're you're an American. You and your wife are both Americans. Uh, you were you were raised in in beautiful sunny California, Southern California, as I understand. And you're the youngest of 11 kids. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. And, yes, and, and a, yes. Fa a family of, of a Christian family generally or or yeah. not? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Christian home. Yeah. So 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 we when you were a little boy as the youngest of 11 kids, did you think to yourself that someday when I grow up, I'm going to be a missionary in Ghana? Ah, you know, it's it's that's a very interesting question. And to be honest, there was always a sense I received the Lord as my personal savior when I was seven. And there was always a sense that God wanted to use my life and that God would use me. And so from that very young age, I would pass out gospel tracts and I would ask my friends uh, to come to church. Uh, at the age of 17, the Lord called me into the ministry. And so uh, before you went to, much, before you went to college. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I had a wonderful pastor who mentored me and uh, discipled me and uh, allowed me to just, uh, as they would say, uh, cut my teeth and uh, do the Lord's work. I've uh, spoken young people's conferences or retreats and things of that, of that nature. Uh, I was my high school chaplain. Uh, but to just fast forward, uh, I... I being the youngest of 11, uh, I kind of bargained with God. I knew what it was to wear hand-me-down clothes and and not have the, all the niceties of life and uh, ask God, you know, I'd like to go and get some education, and that's education for the purpose of making money. And so uh, I 
wanted to become a, a, a medical doctor, and uh, I ended up becoming a nurse. Uh, and so I was a critical care nurse uh, working in uh, various hospitals in Washington, D.C. area. And uh, the Lord allowed me to, to achieve the, the six-figure income, a nice home, and, and just a lot of the things that, that the American dream represents. Uh, during that time, I'd, from early night, you know, 17 going, I'd been involved in ministry. And uh, I just realized that being a good church member, uh, being a, a good Sunday school teacher was not what God had called me to. He, I knew that my life was for full-time service. And uh, I was part of a men's prayer group. We prayed every, uh, every morning, uh, starting at 4 o'clock. And there was one individual who would say over and over again, Brother Kearney, if God's calling you to Africa, you need to go. And I thought, what's this all about? You know, uh, and it was during that time that I was pretty much at the peak of my career as a nurse. Uh, and I was working at a transplant unit in uh, Georgetown Hospital. And uh, when I left that unit that night, uh, it was just as clear as you, you are. Uh, that that would be something I'd never do again. Uh, and I came home and told my wife, you know, uh, we've been, I've been praying about this for months and I haven't shared it with you, but uh, the Lord's called us to the mission field. What, what, so, what did your wife say? Did your wife say, uh, Fred, I well, don't know what you've been drinking or... <laughs> <laughs> very much so. Uh, just, just, just as a... Uh, not to correct you, but my wife was born here in Ghana. Oh, really? And uh, yes, yeah, she was. And one of the things that 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 said is, she said, "No, that can't be." You know, she said, "When I was there as a child, I nearly starved to death. I, I remember losing the hair on the top of my head and uh, carrying water and standing in lines to get food. And then when I they got to me, they closed the door. And and so she had a lot of uh, apprehension. Uh, she didn't particularly want to come, and and uh, there were so, there were a number of factors that uh, played into that. And uh, but the Lord worked through them all, and uh, she, you know uh, she surrendered, and we went through the qualify qualifications or the training to become missionaries. And then we began debutation. And what is debutation? Debutation is, uh, is where you would present your ministry in a church. And just like uh, uh, the deputy on, uh, what was that move? Uh, Opie, well, he was given the authority to represent the government of North Carolina. And so I've been given by a number of churches the, you know, the authority to represent them, to be an extension of their hands, their voice, touching lives through the power of the gospel here in Ghana, West Africa. And so that was a process to basically, because when we reach the continent, we're not able to uh, have employment. And so it's uh, absolutely imperative that we are self-supported uh, or able to support ourselves. So you so, went from a, I mean, I know, I know people watching are saying to themselves, Fred and his wife went from a six figure income and a, and a comfortable existence in the Washington DC area, which is a beautiful area of the country to, uh, West, uh, to West Africa, to, to Ghana, uh, to no income at all, because that's where God right. put you. And Amen. so, so how, how, how did you, um, were you were you nervous or afraid, uh, or did you have enough money saved up where you didn't have to think about it? Or, well, the reality was that uh, God's calling was more important in my thinking than anything else. Uh, I'll never forget. You know, uh, we had invested in our children. We had a baby grand piano. We had all the, you know, the things that mothers and wives have, and we gave them all away and. You know, uh, it was it, on one hand, it was quite for me. It wasn't nearly I don't believe it was nearly as traumatic as it was for my wife, uh, because I, I just knew that what God had called us to was more valuable 
than any worldly possession that we could ever have. And I'll, I'll just have to say, uh, 17, going on 18 years, fast forward, uh, that's abs- it's just proven to be absolutely correct. The, the investment that we've been able to make in the lives of people, seeing people saved and, you know, uh, live a godly life and uh, partner with us in reaching others, it's just been tremendous. So as a, as a, as a missionary uh, in, in Ghana, are you affiliated with one church or do you work with one church or is the mission field kind of, you know, everywhere in the country that you happen to be sent or, or how, how does your well, ministry work? As, as it would relate from the state side or here? Yeah, yeah from, uh, so there in Ghana, what's it like for you administering? Are, are, you, oh. are you domiciled at a church? And then for you, from that church, you you do your your ministry, or are you domiciled uh, at home? And then you work with four or five churches, and you travel around. Tell us what it looks like. I've had the wonderful privilege to start uh, three churches, uh, plant three churches, uh, and so uh, those men that are leading those works were under our ministry uh, in leadership positions. And what we pretty much, uh, once we send them out, we're there to assist. Uh, and so that, that has been uh, my role. Uh, I'm, I'm a facilitator. If, they, if there's a need that I can meet, if there's counsel that they need, uh, that that's it. But pretty much once we establish a work and send those men out, they are independent. Uh, and so we, we've had a wonderful privilege to have, we call it our A to Z plan. And when we arrived in Ghana, uh, we came with many recognizing that there were many challenges and so uh, we, you know, came ready to deal with people with addictions, uh, dealing with uh, teenage pregnancy. Uh, and, and but one of the areas that I think would be the ice cream on the cake for us is uh, we we've had the wonderful privilege to start an orchestra and to train people in music. Uh, discipleship is very uh, an inter- integral part of our ministry. Uh, and one of the ways that we disciple people is training them and teaching them, uh, you know, how to play a musical instrument. We had as big as a 62 piece orchestra and, uh, it's, it's just been a blessing. That is amazing. Is there any danger at all? I mean, uh, uh, from the standpoint of the government, uh, is there any resistance to people coming in from overseas and spreading the gospel of Jesus? There's not much uh, of a problem. However, the Lord provided us with a piece of property and we share a fence line with a mosque. And uh, we as we started as we started our building project, uh, they have been a very um, antagonistic. They actually uh, appealed to all the municipalities, all the various offices in the municipality that we would cease and desist. So we're presently dealing with opposition, uh, you know, from Islamic people. And I I realize it can get pretty serious to the point of being life-threatening because, you know, uh, they're, they're not peaceful people uh ultimately and so uh it's i i pray daily for my safety but as far as in the community uh you know things are it's a it's a safe environment politically a safe environment that is that well that that's that's a that's a really a tough one you know in in the in the as you know in the u.s uh i don't know of anybody that faces that kind of a challenge where they have to worry about uh, such hostility that their life may be threatened. So that's certainly a, a real challenge. What about the, the quality of, of living, the, the lifestyle? I mean, so for most Americans, including African Americans, 
we don't have a real sense of, of the difference in uh, the, the quality of life uh, from the U.S. To, uh, to, to a country like Ghana, uh, a great country, but, but I'm, I'm, we're, I'm just guessing that perhaps the, uh, uh, the, the, the wages, the, the, the average income, I'm guessing is, is maybe not like the United States. No, uh, it's it's a very uh, I guess you describe it as a, a pyramid. Uh, there there are wealthy people, and I guess because the enclave that we live in, or the area where we live, uh, is probably one of the poorest areas in Ghana. Uh, it's uh, you know I mean uh, I I never get over the depth of the poverty. What, what, uh, what might we, what might a family make in, in a year in that poor section of Ghana where you are? If you had to guess, if if I would I would guess no more than probably a thousand dollars, if that seven hundred fifty dollars a year. Wow. Uh, you know, imagine someone making uh, fifteen dollars a day, uh, and that's that's that's. Um, you know, a big person. Um, and then, you know, uh, I believe, you know, there, there, but like I said, there, there are those who are well employed and they're uh, part of the upper class, but uh, there's, you know, there's a large, uh, Ghana's a developing nation and the, the middle class is growing, but Unfortunately, where I am uh, and where we minister, we don't really see that sector of society. Uh, and sometimes my children tell it, they, as we've spoken in past, you know, they say, Dad, I didn't realize that there were places in, you know, that weren't far away that were so nice. So uh, the, the poverty is real. Uh, it's it's uh, I think you see it in the infrastructure. Uh, I guess that's more political related. Uh, but, yeah, I thank the Lord for his call on my life and the opportunity to minister to the uttermost. So how, how do how do uh, Ghanaians, uh, people in, in Ghana who maybe are really, really poor, you know, maybe they're making seven hundred and fifty dollars over the course of a whole year. And, and then they see mm-hmm. you and your wife and uh, and to them, of course, uh, you, you are phenomenally wealthy, I'm guessing, because they don't. Would they see it that way? I think they look at us and think, you know, uh, why did you come here? That's a yeah. question that we always get. Why would you leave America and come here? And, and I think that. Uh, we all, we always answer that question because of you. And so, uh, it's, it's, you know, and I don't, we try to in every way, uh, we don't live a, I don't think we live in such a way that there, that, that it's, well, we, 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 we are who we are and we minister to who we minister to. And I think, you know, we've never ha- had a closed door. Our home has always been a place where everyone was welcome. And so, you know, uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I hope they don't see me as rich. <laughs> I hope they see me as a loving pastor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, when we return, I'll ask Frederick about what's happening in Ghana. What, what's the environment like for their message? What are they praying for God to do in this extraordinary West African nation? Don't miss it. Learn more about Joe Watkins and the mission of this program at joewatkins.net. And tell Joe what you thought about today's program in the comment box. We're with a missionary who has surrendered his life to a calling in Ghana, West Africa. Fred Kearney is our special guest, and he's joining us from the city of Tema. Uh, Fred, I hear some viewers thinking, man, I would never take my family to a country with so many potential dangers. How do you understand risk when it comes to doing what God calls you to do? I I would have to say 
that if you are in the center of God's will, you're in the safest place that you could be. And, and that has been my experience. Uh, God has kept us through danger seen and unseen. Uh, and so I, I, I would not feel comfortable being anywhere else at this place point in my life. God's call has not changed. And that's why we're still here ministering. Yes. Is, is that the is, is that a call to prayer, a Muslim call to prayer that we hear in the background? It is. Yeah. Then that, that's, that's because the 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 um, the Muslim uh, the mosque is right next to you. Literally, as you said, it, it, it adjoins the church that, that you where you are. Yes, it is. It yeah. is. It yeah. is. Yeah. 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 Are, are you? Um, uh, what, what's the atmosphere like between Christians and Muslims in, in, in Ghana? You, you, you were saying that certainly where, where you are because of the proximity, your proximity to the mosque, there's been a lot of tension and, 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 and probably threats. Um, but, but what is the overall atmosphere like in Ghana between Muslims? And are Muslims the majority of the country or are Christians? It's uh, predominantly a Christian nation. Uh, however, uh, Islam in Ghana is rapidly, rapidly growing, and there's an influx of people who are extremists. Uh, and uh, however, in Ghana over the years, the, the, the attitude is everyone has the right to be wrong. Uh, and there's, they have REO, religious moral education, uh, which is a basically uh, teaching tolerance uh, for uh, different religions. And so for the most part, uh, they're, you know, looking at the nation, there, there's, there seems to be a, a calm uh, between the various religions. However, my situation kind of brings to it a different, uh, you know, element. Yeah, yeah. I, this is really uh, fascinating because, uh, you know, th th we don't, th this is not the kind of thing that we encounter here in the, in the United States. And I suppose there are some watching that says, well, it would be easy enough for you to come back home uh, to the United States where you don't have to deal with this uh, kind of a thing. I mean, what, what do your children say? I know that uh, you, you're, you're, two of your children, are, are all your kids back in the United States or, or, or some of them? They back? are. Presently, presently, all of them are back in the United States. It was rather interesting. We, we arrived back on the field after a furlough uh, just last year in February. And uh, we have a family meeting every other month. We kind of have a, a Zoom family meeting. And uh, they, my eldest son was the spokesperson. And uh, they just felt like they needed to tell us that they, they would like to have us uh, for their children. And would we consider just, you know, we've been faithful for at that time, 17 years, would we consider coming back home? And uh, we, ha we had to make it very clear to them that a call of God is not, uh, until, uh, you know, it doesn't change. And uh, just because we, when we took our youngest daughter back, uh, we became empty nesters. Uh, and so uh, we just made it very clear to them that, that God's call is not, uh, hasn't changed and we'll be here until the Lord makes us so clear that we shouldn't be, that we have no other option but to, to come back to the States. And it won't be because uh, they simply said, hey, please come home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, well, well Fred, it's, it's been quite a privilege having you on tonight's program. I know I speak for so many of our viewers in thanking you for being a faithful witness to God's love in Ghana. And, and our prayers go with you and your, and your wonderful wife. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I wanna thank you for having me on. And uh, it's, it's been a joy. Thank you so much, brother. I'll be right back with our great producer, Jeff Coleman. You're watching Joe Watkins' State of Independence on Lighthouse TV, positively different. Share your comments about today's program in the comment box at joewatkins.org.
So now we'll talk to our great producer, Jeff Coleman. Um, you know, I'm sitting with the headphones uh, over there listening to this interview, and in the back you could hear all the sounds, the street sounds of Ghana, and then I think his choir was practicing that he was talking about in another part of their compound. And then you could hear the Muslim uh, call to prayer from the mosque next door. That is the kind of drama that in America we generally try to avoid. We try to, everyone kind of has their corner of the world uh, in your community, and those communities never meet. But what happens when your church and the mosque are essentially sharing the same piece of land? How do you respond? Do you respond in fear? Do you respond uh, with hospitality? Do you, you make these decisions on the mission field um, that you don't often have to, to make here? And I think the way that he is handling it, saying we're not going anywhere and we'll navigate the difficulties from the city and the complaints. I mean, um, he wants to expand the church, as he said, and his neighbors don't want him to expand. They want to be able to expand or have a reach in the community and shut that voice down. And, uh, you know, in a, in a place like Ghana uh, and many other countries around the world, uh, it isn't always clear that uh, your judges or your local officials are immune uh, to bribes and other kinds of incentives. So, um, I mean, his I, life is on the line, really. His life is on the line. And uh, uh, every time we bring someone like a Fred, to this program, it is with a very specific purpose. And that is for anyone who is watching who thinks, I can't go into politics, I can't go into ministry, I can't go into some of these fields that are difficult. Um, wherever God calls you, you might have to sell the grand piano. You might have to send your kids to a different school. You might have to expose yourself to certain kinds of dangers, but you're not gonna be alone. And that's the same thing for anybody in a nursing home or any other, uh, anyone else is watching in, in the hospital room where they're at tonight. We want them to have courage. Yeah, what a, what a great witness. I know they're also trying to build, uh, they want to expand uh, the church. And so at least uh, they've had a, everybody's had a chance to see the website uh, that's in right. case they want to support uh, Fred. Yeah. What a great work to support. Yeah, 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 great man. Great man. Well, your mission station is not likely 5,000 miles away from this desk but it is a mission state, station. Whether you're an inmate in a state prison or a member of a retirement community or watching this on your phone in an apartment or dorm room, that's where God has placed you for his purpose. Don't miss that opportunity. Before I go, let me ask you to please send me a comment or a question in the comment box at joewatkins.org. I'll read and respond to each one. It's always good to know that we've encouraged and, and helped you. For Jeff Coleman and the entire production team here at Lighthouse TV, I'm Joe Watkins from America's First Capital, Philadelphia. Thanks so much for watching, for welcoming us into your home. God willing, I'll see you next week. What courage he has. Yeah. That, that's courage. That, that courage and faith. I mean, to know his life is threatened. To... But he's not alone. Joe Watkins' State of Independence is a production of Lighthouse TV, positively different, made possible in part because of the support of viewers like you.